Morning, everybody. Happy Lent. How's your Lent going? How's your Lenten prayer, your Lenten fasting, your Lenten almsgiving? I've said it every week, it's so important. Lent is a crucial, crucial liturgical time. We can't blow it off. Way too much is at stake. Here's one big reason why the season of Lent is so important. It's because of the biblical notion of sin, St. Paul's notion of sin. You see, the scriptural notion of sin is that sin is much, much, much more than our individual sins. St. Paul understood sin to be something much more encompassing and much more dangerous. St. Paul saw sin <clears throat> as a powerful force in the world, a powerful force against our humanity, a powerful force at work against us being created in the image and likeness of God, a powerful force at work in the world which is out to destroy and disfigure and distort humanity and God's beautiful creation. If we think about it, we know this broader and deeper notion of sin about how powerful it is and about how pervasive it is. We know it's true. Think of it. After thousands and thousands and thousands of years, Humanity, we're still fighting against each other on an individual, on a local, on a global level. Think of the war in the Ukraine. Just think of the way, way too many murders right here in little Lexington, Kentucky. And turning inward, just think of some of the violent and hateful thoughts that sometimes invade our consciousness and the times that we act on them. One of the most insightful and scary things that St. Paul said was this. Here's St. Paul saying, I do not do what I want to do, but I do what I hate, that power of sin. Think about it. Many human beings, children, go to bed hungry. Many human beings live without the basic necessities. Our courtrooms and our jails are packed still after all these millennia. Sin is a powerful force against humanity and God's creation. And if we think about it, we know this powerful force of sin is created by a combination of our fallen human nature. And with that fallen human nature, we develop sinful social structures. Think of racism, slavery. Think of the sex slave industry. Think of the slave labor trafficking, all still flourishing. And the list could go on for many pages. So there's our fallen human nature, sinful social structures we create, and we can't forget the demonic. Satan and his demons are laughing through all of our human trials and tribulations. History shows that humanity alone has not and will not be able to right all of the human wrongs. So brothers and sisters, there has to be some outside force, a divine force from outside the system has to act to save us. It has to be a loving act of God who has to make the definitive move to set things right. So God intervenes. God intervenes in many ways, but his definitive way, by sending us Jesus. God intervenes to bring ultimate victory to all of, all of humanity, all of creation. That's the cross. 
and the resurrection, it confirms the cross. The cross is effective. Love defeats sin and death. So no matter how strong a force sin is, and we know it's strong, God's love is stronger. In the end, love is the victorious force in the cosmos. That's why Lent is so crucial. It is a crucial time to remind us, to help us, to align ourselves with the winning side, to align ourselves on the victorious side. You see, in praying and fasting and almsgiving, with God's grace, we are aligning ourselves with Jesus in the way of God against that powerful force of sin. See how important Lent is? We are aligning ourselves with the victor, with Jesus. So how is your Lent going? Jesus begins his entire ministry by saying, repent and believe in the gospel. Lent is a penitential season, a season where we honestly examine our lives and be honest about the times we've aligned ourselves not with Jesus and the ways of God, but with that powerful forces of sin. How's your Lenten? Repentance going. Repent. Believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news. The good news is that every season of penance, like Lent, every season of penance is also a season of mercy. God is kind and merciful. I want to repeat that. Every season of repentance is also a season of mercy. God is kind and merciful. Repent and believe in the good news. How's your Lent going? How's your prayer going? Each week we've given some suggestions for our Lenten prayer, how to up our prayer game a little bit. Here's another suggestion for our Lenten prayer. Pray for our enemies. Pray for our enemies. That's something that sets us apart as Christians. It's how we treat our enemies. So don't be shy. Be honest. Make a list. Make a list. Make a list of people you don't like. Make a list of people you don't love. There's a difference. But make a list. Make a list of your enemies and pray for them. And you see, when we do, you see what's happening? When we do, we are aligning ourselves with the victor. We're aligning ourselves with Jesus. How's your prayer? How's your Lenten fasting going? You know, Jesus says that some evils in the world... There are some evils in the world that can only be confronted with prayer and fasting. Some evils in the world can only be confronted with prayer and fasting. Jesus says that. So pray and fast for peace. Pray fast for peace. Here's something else you may want to do concerning your Lenten fast. When we skip a meal or when we abstain from meat, make a conscious effort to think about Jesus on the cross. When we abstain from a meal, when we abstain from a meal, when we fast from a meal and abstain from meat, bring to mind Jesus on the cross. Because brothers and sisters in Christ, that was the definitive move. That was the definitive move of God that defeats sin and death, the definitive move to save us. You see, it's only that complete self-sacrificial by love that can confront and defeat the force of sin. So when we fast and abstain, 
Think about Jesus on the cross. See what it does? You see what's happening? We're aligning ourselves with the victor. We're aligning ourselves with Jesus. How's your prayer? How's your fasting? How's our Lenten almsgiving going? How are we developing our generosity habit? Here's a suggestion from Matthew Kelly's book, The Generosity Habit. Get involved. Be a volunteer. Pick something Christ-like. Pick something where we're serving others. Let's add some love to the world. And if we see a need, volunteer before asking. Be a solution. You see, the generosity habit, it's not just some clever slogan or some slick marketing campaign. No, it goes so much deeper. It's more critical than that. With the generosity habit, we are building up the habit of being like Jesus, the victor. When we give of ourselves, you see... You see, we're aligning ourselves with the victor. Isn't that what today's gospel is all about? Aligning ourselves with Jesus? It's then, when we align ourselves with Jesus, it's then that we bear the good fruit. God is so patient with us, giving us time, to do things that will bear good fruit, giving us this Lent and last Lent and the last Lent and the next Lent to align ourselves with Jesus, the victor over sin and death. Our prayer, our fasting, our almsgiving, our generosity is not insignificant. We're uniting ourselves with Jesus. How is your Lent going? Repentance, believing in the good news. Every season of penance is a season of mercy. How's your prayer, your fasting, your almsgiving? How's your aligning yourself with the victor?